My ladies and gents, welcome to Wednesday morning. And it's chucking it down yet again. Uh, you probably can hear it on the roof. So yeah, we've uh, had a fair bit of water already, which is not ideal. Hmm. So, ooh, for another stuff. So yeah, not ideal. Uh, so this morning I've got the quad bikes coming to here and get service, so I need to make a bit of space and work out how the hell I'm going to crawl under a quad bike to change oil. Um, plus it's a bit different to what I'd have expected as well when we do it, so... Yeah, right, I could do put some wind in that as well, worry. <sighs> Sick of that tyre going down, I did ring somebody before Christmas to come and put in a tube in it, and they never rang me back. Hopefully he's ordered it, because then he can sit on his shelf and he can wonder why he's got it. Yeah, back one's looking a bit low. Right, quad bike's warming up, doors, stuff, you'll find out about that. And uh, radio. Right, so this is our Kawasaki 300 brute force, which is, well, I hate it. <laughs> Absolutely hate it. So it's uh, like a CVT, it's a belt drive on it, there's no gears on it. And I think it's the worst belt drive I've ever known. And I used to drive mopeds, or well, ride mopeds. Um, yeah, it's just really noisy when it's going. It's ticking over quite nicely, but it's just really noisy when you're on the road. And not particularly nice. And for some strange reason, we do a lot of towing with it, a lot of trailer work with it, for hay. And um, the way the back end's set up, the back end actually tries to lift when you set off with the trailer. It's really odd. Whereas the other one would actually kind of hunker down and go forward. This kind of tries to lift up, which is no good when it's only a real-world drive. So, anyway. Right, I've got some 1040 for this, which is what was in the handbook, or SE30, I think I've done it too far. Um, but yeah, I'll show you what's different about it as well. Right, so the first hour has been uh, bugging around, trying to take that off. Uh, so I had to take all these bolts out. Whoever designed it didn't think about... Uh, service in the old girl right? but here so basically there's a ring of bolts around here and through the floor to hold that panel of course the ones on the floor are starting to rust nicely so granted if we kept the foot plate a bit cleaner it'd probably help but when they're actually like a well and you're moving hay around all the time and we're on that heavy clay so it doesn't help <sighs> right so Fillet point, there's actually a little window down there to see oil level, uh, and then the drain plug's somewhere under there, and then the drain plug for the transmission is here. Just need to double check what the transmission oil is, but it's 1040 for the engine anyway, so it's not too bad. And hopefully, it's still, yeah, it's just lukewarm. So, yeah, right, bowl under there, sweep and brush, sweep this up, and then get the oil dropped. Right, so we've dropped the engine oil out and put the bung back in. Dropped the transmission oil out and put the bung back in. And I've just taken the filter out of the engine oil. Which is that? I don't know if you'll see that as well. There's some uh, some nice little lumps in there. Um, but yeah, that's what the engine oil filter is. Instead of like a cartridge, it's just got this, which is... Oh, I can't work out. I like it because you'd have to buy another one. So it's cheap. I was just talking to another lad and said, with a filter one, like a cartridge one, you know that you're getting clean oil put back into the engine with its change and a clean filter. And if there's, a, well, I've just got a feeling that the filter's got a finer cost on this, which is probably wrong, but anyway, so yeah, I'll go wash this out in some petrol and uh, take them flakes off, which, uh, hmm. I think that's small. Anyway, I've only done this, well, this is my first time servicing it, so. But for somebody who's over six foot, having to crawl on the floor to get to the drain plugs and the rest of it's a bit of a pain in the bum, but. Anyway, right, a bit of petrol, clean it out, and then uh, pop it back in. Right, so that's the transmission oil filled up. I might as well show you where stuff is. Uh, 
the transmission while I'm on with it. Uh, fill plugs, that one just there. Level plug is that one just there, that's just starting to drip, which of course is in front of that. So that's a pain in the, pain in the bum. Uh, obviously got fill point there. And then underneath, move that across a little bit, we have got, I'll show you there. So just, just there is, um, so just there is the drain plug. Um, to the left hand side of it, underneath, And this is where the oil filter is, the little one. So everything's fairly tight in there. And underneath, uh, the mate rang us and I said to him I was doing this. And I said he could do with a car lift. Um, I could use a forklift, but there's nothing really here to put a tine under. It's only that a bit of steel, which mm -hmm, fancy. In front of it would be all right, but Obviously that's where your gearbox and the rest of it is. So, so there's a 1014 engine. Uh, there's a straight 90 SE 90 in the gearbox. And there's a straight SE 80 in the rear axle, which happened to have for, well, her. So, uh, since I'm on with it, I might as well drop out the back axle and probably look at air filter as well, because air filter really cleverly Ooh. sucks in from the back just here you know where, where all the shit is and the exhaust <laughs> uh right we'll keep going right so that's the back end oil dripping and of course it hits that pan down there but, but uh, it's looking a little bit silver in that i don't know how well you'll know it's disappeared now there was actually a, a ring of silver kind of in the Hmm. It's more than I'd like to have seen in there anyway. Confession confession time. I screwed up. Well, I didn't really screw up. So there's a little plate that sits underneath the diff at the back. And uh, well, I thought the drain plug was that one. Oop, that one there. Which I didn't think was very low. But there's actually another one down there. Which um, is lower. But the annoying thing is, there is actually a hole in the side here to see the bum. But you just can't get a spanner in it, so really should just make that a bit wider, but then it'll fill up bottom up with oil. And, oh, I don't know. Could have been an easy way, I'm sure, but never mind. Right, we'll leave that to drain out a bit longer. You can see that film on top there. Not only like film, not a metally like film. But yeah, we'll. Uh, Get that fill back up in and get it out. Right, she's done. So it's taken me like an hour and a half just to get myself sorted with it. And uh, I oiled up, but we're all done. But everything I did have the instruction book as well, just to uh, make sure I knew kind of half what I was doing. So it's the first time I've done this quad, so not too bad. Um, a little bit disappointed how much steel well, filings seem to have been accumulating in the transmission and the rear diff. Um, kind of transmission is one of them that is a bit clunky on the gear change if you're not careful. Um, but yeah, not too bad. It's just a pain having sick that whole plastic sheath enough to get to half the engine. It could have been designed a little bit easier, but hey, uh, it's a quad. I'm not used to them, so not too bad. Right, time for a broom, he thinks.